father was putting his six-year-old boy to bed, and he tapped on the little boy's chest and said, do you know what, what do we have in this out of And he asked, the little boy said, my guts. This guy responded to the child. No, said the dad, you have a piece of God in there. It's God's gift and it's inside all of us. Do you have a piece of God in your heart? Asked the boy. Yes, I certainly do. What about mommy? Does she have a piece of God inside of her? She most certainly does, said the boy. Then the dad reminded his son of the next door neighbor, Mildred, a truly mean little kid in his kindergarten class. Even Mildred has a piece of God inside her, said the dad. This stunned the little boy, no, not Mildred. When his father insisted, the boy said, Daddy, you know, I know her better than you. She doesn't have a piece of anything good inside of her, much less a piece of God. But the dad insisted until one time the, the boy gave in and shaking his head said, Well, her piece must be all covered with a lot of junk. <laughs> all covered with a lot of junk. That's often the case. But Jesus could always see through the junk and find deep inside every heart a tiny reflection of his Father's face. And that's what he did in today's Gospel, when that young girl was caught in the act of adultery and was about to be stoned to death. He saw her sin, and this wasn't her first time, but hidden underneath it he saw his Father's face imprinted in your soul. That mark said she was God's child. He saw her longing for happiness, for love, for a life. And he saw what she might yet become with a little help, with a second chance. Then he looked at all those men, many of them old customers of hers, yet all with big stones in their hands, ready to erase her life without a second thought. Jesus saw past all that junk too, and there engraved on their souls too was his father's face. They too were marked as God's children, and in their souls, were all the same hopes and longings for life and happiness, for love and for peace. He saw what they too might become with a second chance. So he ignored their legal questions and cut right to the chase. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. He wasn't attacking them. He was inviting them to stop wasting their time and being angry about the bad and stupid things other people do. And instead to look inward, to see the truth about themselves, to see the junk that was covering up the face of God inside them. And then to get rid of that jungle, he was offering them a second chance. What happens when a second chance is accepted? A grateful heart happens. A heart that knows how lucky it is. That knows how to wait patiently, openly, and at the right time, extend a hand to others in whose heart the face of God is covered with junk too. In the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, they have a, a saying, it's a paradox. You can't give away what you don't have. And 
and if you want to keep what you have, you have to give it away. But there's a qualifier. Before you help someone else, you have to look in the mirror and see what junk you have inside yourself. Then admit to God, to yourself, and to another human being the nature of all that junk you found. Here we call that reconciliation. For many years now, I have had the privilege of working on the forensic unit at a mental health hospital with men and women who have been found not guilty by reason of insanity. Many of these men and women have committed heinous crimes while in the throes of their psychosis. Some have ended the lives of another, sometimes even the lives of their loved ones. As they begin to recover with the help of medication and therapy, they begin to realize the reality of what they have done while they were psychotic. Most believe that they were fighting an evil entity and were actually saving the lives of those they cared about from a present evil. When their minds begin to heal, they begin to experience a profound sense of guilt and shame and remorse, and believe they are beyond forgiveness from those lives they have impacted, and especially beyond self-forgiveness. They resist the message that they are not bad people trying to get good, but sick people trying to get well. That self-forgiveness is possible and necessary if they are not, if they are to take responsible for, responsibility for their own recovery. Jesus sees past all that junk too, and there engraved on their souls too is, the, is the, his Father's face. They too are marked as God's children and deserving of, of living a healthy and happy life. These men and women deserve a second chance. We need to look past the sin and see the sinner. We need to look past the illness and see the person. There are people in our communities, our neighbors, our fellow parishioners, and in our own families that need a second chance. Jesus showed us how to do this and, and why we need to. Now it's our turn to walk in his footsteps, to put down our big stones, extend our hands and help one another lift away the junk that burdens every soul. Till at last God's smiles may shine brightly on every 